Tonight on WTOP 10 Nightly News, a fifth grader in Texas is going viral for his music skills. Why his millions of fans are going crazy. And Elon Musk has found a new CEO for Twitter, when the new boss could take over. Plus, tonight is our final live broadcast of the semester, and the seniors are taking it over. A special Senior Week edition of WTOP 10 Nightly News starts right now. Good evening and welcome to WTOP 10 Nightly News. I'm Pat Machado. And I'm Jared Wakefield. Tonight's newscast is the second of our two Senior Week shows. Everyone you'll see on air tonight is a senior. Just a disclaimer, this is not what our typical newscasts look like. Our top story tonight is one that is bound to make you smile. A fifth grader in Houston who loves playing music is getting attention for it. A lot of it. A video of him doing his thing has gone viral. And now he's got millions of fans. Gerald Harris has the story. Trayvon Nursey seems to find an audience every time he picks up an instrument. And this TikTok video of Trey playing in front of his neighborhood friends has gone viral. I'm surprised because I never knew that this day would come. I knew it would come, but then not this early. Over 3 million people have seen Trey rock out to the music he plays, and sometimes it's a freestyle. Or he plays gospel music, which is part of his musical roots. It all started in the church, because I grew up in the same church that I learned how to play music in. Trey's musical journey began when he was just two years old, when he started playing the drums. Six months ago, a family member gave him his first piano, and since then he has been crafting his skills. Now he's nearly a pro. I see other people go viral, but not me. Trey says he wants to be a musician, own a studio, and tour the world, and meet Chris Brown. Music it helps your mind and, it's, and it soothes you. Trey has been mostly without words since going viral, and his mom Destiny says Trey sometimes shock her with his musical ability. I'm shocked myself. And it's not just those in Trey's neighborhood and church that are impressed. It's the Houston staying face for me. Yeah, okay. Laura Coleman is the creative director at the American Music Academy. She says Trey's future is bright. The way that he moves with the music, you can tell that it really is ingrained in him, um, which is something that's really exciting to see in someone that young. And despite Trey not being successful in getting me to learn how to play the keys, he's sticking to making music. In fact, some celebrities like producer Tay Keith is gifting him a new piano, speakers, and a MacBook to continue lighting up the world with music. And unfortunately, you will not be seeing Trey on tour anytime soon, but the good news is you can catch him right from your living room on your grandmother's least favorite social media app, TikTok. Mother's Day is just around the corner, speaking of grandmothers, and a new report says Americans are spending real big this year. The National Retail Association and Proper Insights and Analytics says Sunday should set a new world record. They predict consumers will shell out $35.7 billion for mom based on their annual survey. That's nearly $4 billion more than last year's record high. That's a lot of money. According to the survey, 35 to 44 year olds are the biggest spenders. The most popular gifts are flowers and cards. So before you head home this weekend, don't be a bad child. Make sure you stop by the store and get your mom a little special something. Speaking of billions and billions, Elon Musk announced that he is stepping down as the CEO of Twitter this afternoon. Musk has not released too much information at this time about his successor, but tweeted that he found a replacement and quote, she will be starting in six weeks, end quote. Musk plans to work for Twitter, but will now oversee the company's product and software and serve as the executive chairman and chief technology officer. One Minnesota man says he's alive today because of his Apple Watch. It called 911 after he was hit by a vehicle, and he contacted Apple's CEO to thank him. David Schumann has the story. 
Good afternoon, Mr. Cook. It may seem silly for someone to email the CEO of one of the largest companies in the world and expect the email to be read. But writing to Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, seemed only natural to Michael Broadcorp after what his Apple Watch did for him. It, it absolutely is a life-saving tool. Michael was outside his Egan home last month when a car peeled out nearby. When your dad would do and they see a speeding car where their kids are playing, took a few steps out into the street, a car came around the corner and just hit me. And I just was, was just shocked. I mean, just the sheer force of what it's like to get hit by a vehicle. The car never stopped, leaving Michael badly hurt. The Apple Watch knew that I had taken a hard fall and that I, that I wasn't responding in a specific amount of time. So the watch called 911. It also texted his wife and kids in the house, telling them what happened. I laid there and my family had to come out and find me. And that's a difficult, that's a difficult scenario. Egan police say the driver was a 17 year old boy whose family reached out to the department after the crash. Officers have interviewed the teenager and are finishing their investigation before a charging decision can be made. There's clearly a criminal element to this. This was, this was dangerous. As Michael's ribs and tailbone recover, he's gotten support from family, friends, and the CEO of one of the largest companies in the world. Tim Cook wrote back. It had wished me a speedy recovery and let me know that this is why they designed these type of features. Many smartwatches on the market today have fall detection features. Broadcorp is also thinking social media users for helping find the driver of the vehicle who hit him. As finals are wrapping up, the weather is starting to feel a lot more like the SUNY Oswego brochure. That leaves us to wonder, will this warm weather stick around for graduation? And as child guest Gambino said, will it continue to feel like summer? Brad Lacquadere joins us with the latest. Brad, is it going to feel like summer? Yes, Jared, you are correct. This summer weather is here to stay. I'm Storm Team 10 meteorologist Bradley Lacquadere. Currently in our area, we are looking at temperatures of 58 degrees and clear skies for the rest of this evening. Taking a look ahead, we're going to talk about what our area is going to be expecting over the next several days. Along with this big weather, uh, commencement ceremony this weekend, what type of weather we're going to be expecting, as well as the next seven days and what you can expect in the next week. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Bradley. Coming up later tonight, a dangerous rabbit is terrorizing a neighborhood in Iowa. What a victim has to say about the attacks. And today is National Eat What You Want Day. How to celebrate and more. Get some food. We'll be back after the break. Say, hey, President Stanley, whenever there's bad weather, who would you turn to? I'd turn to Storm Team 10. No, right but here. you've got to say it like this Storm Team 10. Say it with me Storm, Storm Team 10. Told me it was him. Kitty from Glee. Yeah, what it's is it? Al Roker. <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome back to WTOP 10. I'm meteorologist Bradley Lockwoodary. Taking a look at our area, you can see there's really not much to say besides beautiful temperatures in upstate New York. It's about time. The past several weeks have not been looking the best, but it's finally turning around and summer is here to stay. So moving forward, what we're looking for today, we saw a high of 70 degrees and sunny skies and winds 5 to 10 miles an hour. Now tonight, we're going to continue with that beautiful weather. It's going to stay clear and a low of 54 degrees. Winds light and variable. And moving forward to tomorrow, your Friday is going to be again a beautiful day, a high of 68 with winds north 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now taking a look at that bus stop forecast, what can your kids expect? We're looking at 55 degrees around 9 a.m. tomorrow morning with a few clouds in the sky. But that gives away really quick as we are going to take that temperature up to 64 degrees and clear sunny skies. It's going to be very similar to how today was feeling out there. Moving forward to a big weekend, all of us here at SUNY Oswego that are graduating have some beautiful weather ahead. Like I said, tomorrow we have 68 degrees, partly sunny skies. Saturday is mostly sunny, perfect for a barbecue, perfect to have, you know, that post-graduation ceremony, uh, get together with family and friends outside. And moving forward to Sunday, temperatures are going to start to cool off a little bit, but I don't see us getting anywhere below the 50s for the next several days. And speaking of the next several days, let's take a look at our seven-day forecast, okay? Saturday, like I said, is 64 degrees and sunny. Same with sunny, a little bit cooler, 52 degrees. Monday, we're going back up to the 60s, but next week we do have a little system that's going to be pushing through our area that's going to give us some precipitation. 57 degrees on Tuesday. Wednesday is 50 degrees, a little bit cooler with that rain. Uh, shower mix and Thursday as well 56 degrees the rain's going to be here to stay for the rest of your midweek next week that's about all I got for my forecast I'm going to toss it to you guys back at the desk thanks Brad saying no to delicious but unhealthy foods can be a challenge kind of like going scuba diving less than 30 minutes after you eat but not today that's because it's national eat what you want day Observed annually on May 11th, it's time for a little indulgence without feeling guilt or regret. To celebrate, go ahead and treat yourself to your favorite dessert or snack. You can even share your indulgence on social media with hashtag eat what you want day. They're soft and cuddly, but what's not to love about rabbits? Unless you're in Iowa. A biting bunny has been menacing a neighborhood. Jan Moose reports. Beware of bunny! Once upon a time, there lived a rabbit. No, not Peter Rabbit. We're talking about a menacing rabbit that lives in the small city of Perry, Iowa. A black bunny, a bad bunny, a bunny caught lunging... Hey! ...at someone who was perhaps expecting the cuddly kind of rabbit. Ramona Rustin also encountered it. It just jumps up and bites me, and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I just got bit by a bunny. A Perry police report shows it also bit a 13-year-old who then had to have rabies shots. It chased another resident from her car to her door. No wonder it's been compared to the Dracula of bunnies, Bunicula, a vampirish rabbit with fangs. Bunnies have long been bad-mouthed in movies depicted as mutant rabbits. <laughs> Able to decapitate a knight in Monty Python and the Holy Grail. But cooler heads prevailed when Perry police lured the bad bunny into a cage and took it to the city's water treatment plant where it was released. Neither hide nor hair of the rabbit has been seen since. What devil creatures? What unknown terror? Genie Mouse, CNN, New York. And that's all, folks. Hey. Whoa. The World Health Organization says MPOX is no longer a public health emergency of international concern. That declaration Thursday follows a heated discussion and vote from the WHO's MPOX committee. It ends an official designation that's been in place since July 2022 for MPOX, previously known as monkeypox. Such a designation requires countries that abide by WHO recommendations to declare their own emergencies and activate resources. Lifting it doesn't mean the work is over, since MPOX still poses public health challenges. It just shows reported cases are down. After 87,000 of them between January of last year and April of this year, the WHO attributes 140 deaths to MPOX. 
and says it spread to 111 countries and territories. The U.S. alone has reported over 30,000 cases. Coming up next on WTOP 10 Nightly News, a Nashville hospital celebrates Taylor Swift's Eras Tour. Plus, why Morgan Wallen is delaying his tour, I'm going to go eat some Tully's tenders, and we'll be right back. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. We're on that blank. Look that at the way. bling. What the, do we got a diamond test drop? Yeah, that's getting bad. <laughs> yep. Ten out connection. of ten recommend on Yelp. I'm buzzed. I spent too much time on my phone. What? I should take your phone away. No, no, no. I'll call for a ride. Hey, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face filters. Okay, you know what? <laughs> yep, that's mine. I'm gonna need that back. No. Nope. Kevin! Welcome back to WTOP 10 Nightly News. Here's your entertainment update. To start us off, I'm going to do a little entertaining dance. <laughs> Actress Scarlett Johansson admits she is a Disney adult. Kind of. She told Variety she's been a huge fan even though she sued the company for breach of contract in 2021. Johansson said her obsession with Disney really took off when her family moved to Florida when she was younger. And while she was growing up and she fell in love with animated movies like The Little Mermaid, Aladdin, and Lion King, Johansson says she's a huge fan of Disney theme parks and still visits Disney World in Orlando at least 10 times a year. Congratulations to Robert De Niro. The 79-year-old Oscar-winning actor recently revealed he just had another baby to E.T. Canada. The baby is the actor's seventh child. He didn't give any other details. De Niro plays a headstrong Italian father in his upcoming film, About My Father. It co-stars Kim Cattrall and debuts in theaters May 26th. A Nashville hospital celebrates Taylor Swift's tour with Phoebe Bridgers by dressing up their smallest guests in their tailor-made best. Jeremy Roth has today's Take a Look at This. Taylor Swift's concert tour is one of the hottest tickets around. If you can get your hands on one, that is. If not, you can take comfort by taking in these teeny tiny Tay Tays, courtesy of one very creative Tennessee hospital. In honor of Swift's recent tour stops in Nashville, the neonatal unit of Ascension St. Thomas dressed some of their NICU guests in their tailor-made best, mimicking all 10 of Swift's iconic album covers. They even threw in a miniature Ed Sheeran for Britpop fans. Catching a live glimpse of these pop performers may cost you a pretty penny, but enjoying these oh-so-sweet Swifties is completely free and absolutely priceless. Speaking of priceless, watch a sea lion play video games for the Navy. Oh, it's a thing, all right. Spike is no Navy SEAL. Instead, he's one of three sea lions engaged in cognitive enrichment training with the Navy's Marine Mammal Program. 
More than 120 mammals in the program are already trained in reconnaissance and recovery tasks, but relaxing interactive activities like these provide a chance for the sea lions to stay sharp. And as you can see, I ain't lying. <laughs> All right. Well, the week's only half over here. Maybe take a cue from this sassy seal and treat yourself to a hump day spa day. The St. Louis Zoo shared video of the harbor seal getting a much needed manicure. What's more impressive, the seal stayed chill and chipper while the clipper snipped at its flippers. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. First quarter results are showing that Disney Plus subscriptions are down by 4 million to a total of a very measly 158 million. That follows its first ever drop at the end of last year. Variety reports success at the company's theme parks has helped curb its losses, but it's still dealing with layoffs and now the writer's strike and backlash from Governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis. Morgan Wallen is delaying his current one night at a time world tour after the country singer re-injured his vocal cords. He broke the bad news to his fans in a video message on Twitter Tuesday. Let's take a look. After taking 10 days of vocal rest, I performed three shows last weekend in Florida. And by the third one, I felt terrible. So I went in and got scoped yesterday and they told me that I re-injured my vocal cords and that I have vocal fold trauma. Their advice is that I go on vocal rest for six weeks. So that's what I'm going to do. Wallen said he is also no longer appearing at the Academy of Country Music Awards on Thursday, and he'll be performing at the 2024 editions of the music festivals he was scheduled to perform at this year. The new tour dates will be announced soon, and a 30-day refund will be offered for current ticket holders. Coming up in sports, everyone's favorite photographer, Aaron Blank. Aaron, I'm sure we're going to have a wide variety of sports in tonight's sportscast. What do you got? You know, Wakefield, that's right. After the break, I'll be talking about my favorite sport, bowling. <laughs> Welcome back to Major Discussion. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Hey there, I'm Al Roker, class of 76. Yes, way back in 76. Back when the earth was cooling. You're watching <laughs> WTOP. Welcome back to Senior Week News on WTOP. I'm Erin Blank with your Senior Week Sports Report. Let's roll right on to the lanes with the PBA as the Players' Championship is underway this Saturday. They started off with 12 and now are left with the four best bowlers. Kevin McCune, Anthony Simonson, Jacob Botrev, and Bill O'Neill. Each bowler had to battle two rounds on live television to place in the top four. 
Simonson had fought for his place in a roll-up against Tomek Kaukyu, where luck was on his side as a pin flew across to take out the ring and 10-pin. Kaukyu wasn't as lucky as the 10-pin stood still and cost it his chance to be in the top four. Throwing it to another house where the Roth Holman Doubles Championship started their qualifying tournament and have made their way into the finals today. The reincurred team of Jason Belmonte and Bill O'Neill have qualified for the number four seed, while newcomers Pac Harahan and Mitch Hupe qualified for the number one seed. The step ladder finals started at 6 p.m. and Hupe and Harahan won today. Coming back to New York, the USBC New York State Tournament have come and gone in Rochester. And congratulations, Dad, you weren't the worst bowler. Two other people scored worse than you. When we come back, we will have one final story for the night and your senior send off right after this. Hey there, I'm Al Roker, class of 76. Yes, way back in 76. Back when the earth was cooling. You're watching <laughs> WTOP. The Kindly, 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 the Kindly Show with Chloe and Anna. Like licorice, Twizzlers, absolutely nasty. The thought of turkey is just nauseating. I, I think you're wrong, is what I think. You think I'm wrong a lot of time. I do think you're wrong a lot. When you look at the number of disasters in the U.S., chances are every area will deal with some kind of emergency in the next decade. And between school, sports, and social lives, Chances are, you won't be with your kids when it happens. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids has the educational tools and information to make the conversation easy. When the time comes, chances are they'll feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. Keys down, Kevin. But I'm gonna drive home. There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. I guess I have really been looking for love in this dating app. Yep, I'm definitely gonna call a ride home. Welcome back to WTOP 10 Nightly News Senior Week Edition. Our final story of the night, Deb Stan's favorite, the pet of the week. Everyone meet Casey. She is an independent little lady with no mustache who knows what she wants. And it's a short list, love. Casey wants to love you forever and ever. If you are interested in adopting Casey, you can contact the Oswego County Humane Society. So this is our last time on the air, not just for us, but this is the last time in this semester and for the rest of the academic year this year that we're going to be on air at TOP. So everyone gets to say a little something. Let's say we work our way down the desk. Aaron, we'll start with you. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm really just honored to be here right now. And honestly, photography was a big part for me of being in TOP over the past four years. And it's going to be bittersweet, but I love everyone here and I will certainly miss everyone. Yeah, no, I definitely have to thank a couple of people for my time here. Thanks to Morgan Rung for giving this audio engineer from film a chance at sports to discover my love of play-by-play. -play. Some of my friends, Ian Kosick, uh, Cam Nasilia, the rest of my Alpha Kappa boys, catch up no mail. Um, especially, and a special thanks to uh, Evan Flannery and Liana Costello as I went through my seventh year here, <laughs> calendar year-wise, six yeah. in school. So only other people I have to thank is my family and my family in the back. Everybody here and crew, everyone that I've worked with over the years, this is a home and it is definitely very sweet to be moving on. Yeah, I mean, I've got a lot of people to thank. I got to thank Aaron Valentino for pushing a uh, education and marketing major into, hey, you should drop that and you should do broadcasting. You know, I've definitely found a home in a lot of ways here at TOP and at MYO over the past few years. Huge thanks to Aaron and the MYO Sports Board last year for getting me into this, you know, Thomas Turgeon, Merrick and them for trusting me a lot with TOP hockey this year. Probably my last time, very well could be my last time on air ever, going on to do some different things, but very grateful. 
All right, well, I just want to say this is my first time ever being on air. I've done a lot behind the scenes, uh, and this was just incredible. I loved every second of it. I just want to say thank you. Thank you to everyone in WTOP. It's been a wonderful four years, and uh, I wouldn't be here without you guys. So I just want to say thank you for this wonderful opportunity. And thank you for watching us this evening. That's our report for tonight. Be sure to stay tuned for the Mick and Nick show next and the bigger picture at 1030. It's your TV, your TV, you're watching WTLP. Your TV, your TV, thanks for watching WTLP.